Milwaukee Bucks did not come out. The stars of the NBA said they'd use their platform to promote the fight against racial injustice, and they've delivered on that promise. On Wednesday, teams boycotted crunch postseason matches in protest following the police shooting of Wisconsin resident Jacob Blake. And it was Wisconsin's very own team, the Milwaukee Bucks, that led the way by not taking to the court for their game against Orlando. We are expected to play at a high level, give maximum effort and hold each other accountable. We hold ourselves to that standard and in this moment we are demanding the same from lawmakers and law enforcement. We are calling for justice for Jacob Blake. There are also reports that both LA teams, the Lakers and the Clippers, have voted to boycott the rest of the season. The biggest star in the game making his views very clear on Twitter. NBA franchises were joined by teams in the US's top women's basketball division who also refused to play, while matches in Major League Soccer were postponed due to player boycotts. Three Major League Baseball games were also called off. Front and center. But some players on teams that did play made their feelings very clear. I mean, yeah, it was a long day for me, so. Kind of wasn't there mentally, but we'll be all right. The Black Lives Matter slogan has been highly visible across U.S. sport in recent months. And it's clear that some are willing to walk away from a shot at glory to help win the fight against racial injustice. Suhail Malik, Al Jazeera. Well, to talk more about this, joining us now from Chicago is sports legal analyst Xavier Pope. Xavier, how surprising was the reaction from the NBA players and other athletes in the United States? I don't think it was very surprising. We saw a summer of protests after the death of George Floyd at the hand of four Minneapolis police officers in the biggest round of protests that this nation had ever seen. And we saw the players that they were not, NBA players weren't really considering playing at all before the bubble. And you have players get in the bubble where NBA players are staging their, their playoff games right now. And they had a chance to get together and have solidarity to be able to make decisions, to be able to make a difference for change. This comes four years to the day that San, former Fort San Francisco quarter, uh, Fort Niners quarterback Colin Kaepernick uh, he came public with his uh, decision to kneel uh, to, the, to, the, to the world. And so uh, it's a significant day. People will always remember August 26th for the day the sports world stopped after the uh, shooting of Jacob Blake. Xavier, you've mentioned Colin Kaepernick. I mean, did you think, did you imagine it will get to this stage? And also, with these protests and boycotts, can they help bring up change? Uh, that's a great question. I, I, I've been championing this for the last four years since Colin Kaepernick first uh, stated that he was going to kneel, that this was just a, a, a step in a wider process that would take some time for the, the sports world to truly catch up. This should have happened four years ago. Uh, I, I interviewed Mahmoud abdul Rauf. He was a former NBA player that once protested against the national anthem. He stated that until players band together across sports, there wouldn't be any change. And we've now seen it. It took a while for the momentum to happen, for attitudes in society to be able to change, and it's people to start starting to feel the impact of what athletes have been championing for. The Milwaukee Bucks were doing really great uh, recently in the playoffs. What's going to happen next? The Milwaukee Bucks, are, they, were, they had one of the best records in the league. They had the best record in the, the league last year. They had the league's MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, he also Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, I don't think it means much if the Milwaukee Bucks are not standing for the rights and the lives of black people that should not be shot and killed by those that are there to protect and serve them. And so I do believe there may be a bigger waste that starts to come. Um, this, this is not over. This isn't just a moment of silence, like a piece of a game where one day players aren't playing. This is going to be a bigger call. There is going to be, this is going to be just not one day. It's going to get bigger than this. Xavier, let's talk about the Black Lives Matter movement. Are you surprised about how it spread worldwide? <laughs> I am not surprised. There is oppression. There is injustice. There is racism. There is often terrorism, uh, state violence across the world. And the world looks to the United States of America. When the United States of America was embarrassed after the 
at the at the John Lewis and many protesters were shown across the world being hosed and beaten on the Pettus Bridge, marching in Selma. This nation decides decided to act and move towards a voting rights act. And so we've seen this before, but the America had to be embarrassed on the world stage and have the world turn around and shine a light at the country that's supposed to be a shining light on the hill to be able to make a change. And so the world has participated in that. And now the America has to be able to reckon with itself about why the world is responding to what is happening in the world. Sports legal analyst Xavier Pope from Chicago, thank you very much for that. Thank you for having me.